we get three awesome setups featuring the Encase M2, all rocking the new RTX 5080 Founds Edition and the absolute best gaming chip on the market, the 9800X3D, with one goal in mind to find out which setup yields the best thermals. Benchmarking four popular titles, Cyberpunk 2077, Call of Duty Black Ops 6, Forza Horizon 5, and City Skylines 2. All pure rasterization, no DLSS or ray tracing, max settings pushing the system to its limits. All three rocking the same exact components. For cooling, we have our favorite liquid cooler, the Cooler Master Atmos 240. It's a fantastic performer. Since we have a PCIe 5.0 capable graphics card, we're pairing the ASUS X670EI with the linked up Gen 5 riser cable to unlock the full speed of the card. Two 32 gig sticks of stealthy memory from G-Skill, the Ripjaws S5 clocked at 6400 mega transfers. The first setup, the reference build. The RTX 5080 is slotted in a more traditional position with our radiator mounted and taking fresh air, exhausting warm air via two top mounted 25 millimeter fans. Next, the inverted build. Funny story, when I announced the making of this video, many people told me they wanted to see the 5080 mounted upside down. This setup also side mounts the radiator, exhausting warm air from the top mounted 5080 and the bottom mounted 25mm fan set to intake. Lastly, we have the vertical build. The 5080 is in the vertical position with our DIY vertical kit, funneling airflow from the 5080 through the top mounted radiator to exhaust the warm air. Binding the Encase M2 vertical GPU bracket is tough. It rarely comes into stock, but there is a way to create our own vertical kit. You'll need a PCIe Gen 4 or 5 riser cable with a right angle slot like this link up Gen 5 capable riser. It's a good idea to keep the length between 100 and 200 millimeters. This one is 200 millimeters as it was the shortest and most cost efficient option available. The 5.0 cables are very expensive. You're also going to need two female to female 8 millimeter M3 standoffs to elevate the riser and four 1 millimeter thick M3 washers to keep the standoff secure, but they must have an outer diameter of 10 millimeters. Simply attach the standoffs to the riser with two M3 screws. Use two additional screws and washers and insert them into the bottom of the panel and add two additional washers on the other side. You may have to keep the screws loose at first to get the riser bar lined up, but once you have the correct spacing, you can tighten everything down. Switch the back GPU bar on the rear of the case to the horizontal position and fasten down the GPU. It's incredibly secure and it's definitely not going anywhere. This may or may not cost as much or more than the official GPU vertical kit, depending on what is available to you locally. However, it's a fantastic option if you don't want to wait for the next batch whenever that is. Unfortunately, you're stuck with these massive ugly cutouts on the back, but that's nothing new with this case. For the test, I have noise normalized the fans to 40 to 42 decibels at idle and 48 to 50 decibels with the 5080s fans activated in games. The 25 mm Noctua case fans are set to 50% or 1000 RPM and the two Fantex T30 fans mounted to the radiator are set to their advanced mode at 60% or 1200 RPM. Please note that only the inverted and reference build featured the Noctua case fans mounted either on the top or bottom. The RTX 5080's fans ramp up to 1400 RPM during the test or 46% fan speed. Ambient temperature was kept within 0.7 degrees for accurate thermal results. The Ryzen 9800X3D is running stock with a negative 25 curve optimizer. The 5080 is running a slight curve on the core with plus 200 megahertz on the memory. We're running standard expo settings on the system memory. Let's get into the benchmarks and I'll return after to summarize and offer my recommendations.
If you've made it this far, welcome back. It's pretty clear that the reference setup provides the best overall thermals with up to a 12 degree improvement on the CPU and 4K Cyberpunk 2077. This makes sense as the side intake doesn't have to push or pull any warm air through the radiator, all fresh air. GPU temperatures for all setups mostly align, probably a testament to the cooling design on the 5080 Founders card. In second place is the inverted build. While it doesn't have the strongest performance in games, it often matched the reference build. The vertical build, while pretty, it was the warmest system overall. It's still a good performer, but if you're looking to use the M2 in the most optimized configuration, the vertical build isn't the one. If I'm looking to keep the 9800X 3D super cool in gaming, I have to recommend going with the traditional setup, GPU exhausting air up and out the case, and allowing the radiator to pull fresh air from outside the case. You'll get good thermals on the CPU, GPU, and don't have to use an expensive riser cable, adding additional latency. I think the inverted and vertical build looks really cool, and you honestly can't go wrong with any of those setups. That's all for today. Thank you for tuning in. What's the setup you prefer? Be sure to check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description. These help support the channel, and I make a small commission if you choose to use the links. See you next time.